Hi, Matt. My name is Sandy Baird, and we're here with our monthly show of what's going on. And we're here today with colleagues from Toward Freedom, who is Robin Lloyd, and from our main guest, who is Wafiq Faur, who was born and raised in the Middle East, specifically in Palestine, and then also in Lebanon, right? Palestinian refugee in Lebanon. Okay, Wafiq was a Palestinian refugee in Lebanon. So we're here today to talk about probably the most p timely subject that we can be here to talk about, and that is today the war in Gaza. And so leading the interview with Wafiq is Robin Lloyd from Toward Freedom, a citizen activist, a peace activist, a member of Women's International League of Peace and Freedom, and our own citizen activist here in Burlington, Robin. So I turn this over to Robin and Wafiq. Yeah, well, Wafiq, it's great to get to know you. I just uh, heard you speak over the last couple of weeks uh, at different demonstrations, and uh, um, I, uh, I, I'm i wondering, are you, um, you're one of very few Palestinian people living in Burlington? Now? Yes, uh -huh. yes. I mean, the Palestinian community, uh, first of all, it is a small in Vermont in particular. It's not as big as in other uh, cities and states. Uh, in Vermont, it's a small. Two, um, a lot of members of the Palestinian community, maybe you didn't meet them because uh, they are experiencing hard time now in particular mm -hmm. with uh, the sentiment we see it uh, in our media against the Palestinian. Really? Are, uh, you, are you feeling safe here? Uh, safe, I, I, I mean, it's, it's a huge word, but w you heard two days ago uh, about uh, the six-year-old kid in Chicago, in Plainfield, Chicago, who got uh, stabbed mm. 26 times, and, he, and his mother got stabbed many, many times, and uh, the mm -hmm. six-year-old got killed. So there is uh, anti-Palestinian, anti-Arab, Arab mm -hmm. and anti-Muslim uh, sentiment when it comes uh, to this subject. Mm -hmm. Many members of my community definitely they feel that fear. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's such a tragic thing because I think Jewish people are also feeling uh, challenged or uh, frightened maybe. I mean, there were a number of police around the pro uh, Israel demonstration as if there was a fear of some sort of violence, which I think actually is not likely. I mean, I, I can sympathize with the Israeli people, but, um, oh, I mean, over the grief of the loss of their, um, of their 1,000 uh, citizens, but, you know, I, I feel that this is such an abrupt wake-up call for the um, Israeli people because they have not been acknowledging the, the apartheid that they have been forcing on the Palestinian people. They've sort of been living in a, in a dream world that they, not recognizing that they were traumatizing so many uh, Palestinian people, by the way, uh, they they were treating them, and that um, and and basically that the the Netanyahu government is is making a disastrous error by implementing genocide in in uh, uh, in Gaza right now. Uh, it's it's so disastrous to see it. Robin, and, I wanna <clears throat> I wanna correct one thing. Mm -hmm. We have to differentiate between uh, you mentioned the Jewish people inflicting one, two, three. Actually, the, never been uh, the struggle or uh, the fight between a Jewish people and Palestinian people or Arab people. We reject this kind of description. Mm -hmm. The struggle it between uh, Zionism uh, and uh, the Palestinian people. And this is the right correction. So if you have a group of people uh, from uh, the Jewish faith uh, that they feel uh, fear, uh, 
I, 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 I didn't hear uh, from any attack uh, from Arabs or Palestinians against any establishment or personnel from uh, people of a Jewish uh, faith. I know and I have to recognize the anti-Semitism in the United States and in the West existed long before the creation of the State right. of Israel. As a matter of fact, the basis of Zionist movement, which is the ideology that created Israel, it is a Christian Zionist right. movement that they want to colonize uh, that land and keep it under uh, the Western control so they will guarantee their uh, uh, navies and their shipments and the raw material. So Palestine is nothing new that have been occupied because of that. Now, my opinion that the Jews who believed on that kind of uh, creating a state of Israel as safe haven for the Jews after many centuries of uh, anti-Semitism and believed uh, uh, Herzl, uh, the father of the ideology uh, of Zionism in 1896, that we will be safer on a country uh, called Palestine, uh, they have been fooled fooled on a theme that a land uh, with no people for, uh, for uh, people with no land. And they went over there, but they discovered, and we see it today more than ever, mm -hmm. that the land has indigenous people, it's inhibited, they have a cultural tradition, heritage, civilization, goes hundreds of years, mm -hmm. and they will not accept occupation and they will refuse apartheid and control over their life. And this is where the struggle. And what happened uh, on October 7, a lot of people, they take it as one incident just happened. Mm -hmm. Actually, no. What happened on October 7 is a result of 75 years of occupation. And unfortunately, our media making it as if it's between two groups are equal with power and equal with background, equal with this and that. We have to be clear about that. On top of it, <clears throat> our involvement as United States of America and the citizen of United States of America, United States of America are responsible of what's happening over there. Mm -hmm. Mainly now when we see more than ever on the middle of genocide and ethnic cleansing of the Palestinian people on Gaza Strip, which is it's a small strip, it's a 365 kilometer square on southern historical Palestine. When United States goes and feed the war by sending ships and F-35 and F-16 and all kind of military and bombs and stay silent or in front of what they see. It's genocide on screen, on TV, it's daily. After you kill hundreds of people in a hospital, you kill tons of people in a school, in United Nations school. Israel using the American weapons, Israel survival is based on American tax money. Mm -hmm. And this is the truth, and we have to talk about it. Not only with American people, with our Jewish siblings too, you know? And that's why we have more support and more support from Jewish Voice for Peace, and if not now, and many Jewish organizations that they are with us on this struggle. Mm -hmm. So let's be clear about that. It's not a Jewish Arab uh, fight and wars as American and Western media like to do it. If there was a struggle for the Jews, historically existed, and if the Jews suffered historically, it suffered at the hand of the Western world. Exactly. Right. Century after century, ended up with the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. I agree, and we should mourn the people died on the Holocaust, and for their memory, it shouldn't be repeated and never forgotten. But at the same moment, you shouldn't blame the Palestinians on the Holocaust 
and make your solution the Western guilty party on the expense of the Palestinian children in Gaza. It's not equivalent, it's not the same, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, throwing sand on the eyes of the public. Well, you know, I um, began to look at it as a person, as a person raised as a Protestant, as a Quaker, um, and looked at the, sort of the generational trauma for, of both groups, that the um, Jewish people were traumatized, rightly so, by the Holocaust, which was a hideous um, experience during Second World War, and the um, Palestinians by the Nakba. How do you say that word, Nakba? And so, uh, could you define the Nakba and what happened then? In the translation of the word Nakba, it means catastrophe, mm -hmm. which is when the uh, Zionist uh, Jewish organization like the Haganah and Stern committed multi massacres <laughs> against the Palestinians. Thousands of people got killed. And this was in, uh, in 1948. 1947, 1948. Mm -hmm. 850,000 uh, people became refugees in surrounding country in Lebanon, on Syria, Jordan, and uh, Egypt, and uh, some on Iraq, as far as Iraq. Uh, I am a product of that Nakba. I born refugee in Lebanon from a father and mother. They left uh, 17 and 16 years old uh, to Lebanon. And they got married later, and I born as a refugee and lived as a refugee in Lebanon until I came to school here in Boston. But until this moment, my three brothers and my sister still live as refugee over there, like thousands and thousands of people. As you mentioned, because of the Holocaust, some people that the occupation of Palestine took place or the Western support, Actually, the idea of creating Israel happened mm -hmm. on the British promise to the Jews for ethnic religious state in Palestine by Lord Belfort, the uh, secretary, uh, the foreign secretary of uh, the British Empire then mm -hmm. in 1904. Wow. So back. it's a long time between 1904 and what the, uh, the uh, Holocaust and the aftermath. After the Holocaust, it was the flooding of the people by the help of the Western world. And we have to remember, during the Holocaust, many of our Jewish siblings ran away to our shores here in the United right. States and get kicked out. During. So the only place mm -hmm. who took them are the Palestinian. But that doesn't mean it will give a green light or an okay that because this has happened to them, the same should happen to the Palestinians so we can find a space for Jews or we can solve what they called before the Jewish problem in Europe. You mentioned you are a Quaker. It took a while for the Quaker movement to come to our aid. Recently, they introduced uh, apartheid free campaign national wise to every community, you know, and we adopted it here in the uh, city of Burlington, and we're going to introduce it to the citizen of Burlington in March 5th. And I hope everybody will vote for uh, uh, free, uh, 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 apartheid free community that we reject any kind of discrimination, racism, and apartheid in any community here in the United States and in occupied Palestine, Israel. Can I, can I ask something? So um, one of the things that I found most eye-opening when I began to study this question was the fact that anti-Semitism is real and active, but mainly, as you said, it's a Christian phenomenon that comes mainly from Europe, 
correct? It has nothing to do with Arabs or Palestinians. In fact, Arabs and Jews have lived together for centuries. For centuries. For centuries, in peace. Yeah. Right, with, as you call them, siblings. You both speak Semitic languages, correct? We are cousins. Cousins, and, and therefore this whole idea that somehow Palestinians are punished mostly for the Holocaust. Not only that. I, I think it's a historical misunderstanding. I don't think Americans know history very well. But it's in purpose. But yeah, but not on the, I, yes, I agree with you on purpose, but not on the purpose of common ordinary people who simply are uninformed and who don't understand history. I agree. So what you say to me is really important. Jews and Arabs have always, Jews and Palestinians have always been capable of being friends. Always there was a small Jewish uh, community right. in Palestine. By 1903, uh, the Jewish community, according to the uh, Uthmani and the Turkish records, they were 3% of the right. population. But they lived and they thrived. The Jewish community from Morocco to the rest of the Middle East, Turkey, etc., majority uh, of them, uh, a lot of them get expelled from uh, Muslim Spain. Right, in, for, in 1492, in that was a long time ago. And right. No, but they thrived all yes. the time, yes. and right. they had the positions on the government, and they did business, Arabs and Jews, as a one community right. from two di different faiths. The same with the Christians who are living on the Arab world, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. they, we grow up with them on Lebanon, they existed in Syria, you know, because the history of actually the Christianity uh, have been founded on this area. The what, uh, Christian Western countries, they discriminated against right. both the Jewish community yes, exactly. and the Eastern exactly. Jewish, uh, Christian mm -hmm. community. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the discrimination is similar to the United States. It's based on race yes. more than yeah. actually yes. based mm -hmm. on faith. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, uh, and we see it here. If you want to tell me that racism doesn't exist here, we are blind. Right. But you are going to talk also about the current crisis, right? About what's happening. Mm. Yeah. 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 Definitely. So, so how do you? What's going on? It, well, <laughs> what's going on is heartbreaking. It's, it's it's personally some mornings I don't like to wake up. This is on sleep last night, I'm saying. Uh, the Gazan people... Uh, I the would people, point out Gaza, Robin. The you? people living uh, on Gaza, yeah, this is all which Gaza is, is, as I said before, 365 kilometers square. It's How a small people? strip with 2.3 million people. Uh, more than 60% of the people live on Gaza, they are under 18 years old. They are young, and they have been suffering under uh, a complete, complete uh, closure uh, for the last 16 years. Uh, the Israeli closed every way possible to come and to leave from Gaza mm -hmm. for the last almost 16, 17 years. And this war in Gaza is the fifth war on the last 16 years. The it's fifth really war. against Gaza, isn't it? Rather than in Gaza, it's against Gaza. Ag against Gaza, but I say in Gaza because the Israeli goal in Gaza is to empty Gaza. It's the ethnic cleansing of Gaza. And that's why we see in this war, after bombardment against hospitals, that over 500 people got killed there just yesterday, uh, the day before. and. Uh, attacking schools where uh, many Palestinian Gazans uh, took uh, refuge in, uh, they attacked them. Mm -hmm. They won 22 hospital to uh, 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 vacate, mm -hmm. uh, and they ordered people to go south. And uh, Secretary Blinken, to help Israel, he's going to the Arab countries trying to convince them to take the Palestinian from Gaza as refugee. He called it temporarily until we get rid of uh, the militant uh, and the resistance on Gaza.
Well, could I ask you a question about that? Because uh, Netanyahu says every Hamas member is a is a dead man. Now, how many of the people of Gaza are, if they're not members of Hamas, are sympathetic with them? I mean, this is uh, it's is it a card carrying membership type thing or? My impression is most of the people of, of Gaza are in sympathy with Hamas. There is a 4,000 people until this afternoon almost get killed and another 1,000 people under the rubbles. At least over 1,000 people get identified as a children and more, one th more than 1,300 as women. If Netanyahu and Blinken and the supporter of Israel consider those children and those women are Hamas uh, uh, identification carrying members of Hamas, good luck to them. You know, all the Palestinian people get attacked on Gaza. It is the biggest kind of lie that the war, and I see it on the media, is Israel-Hamas war. It is not Israel-Hamas war. It's Israel-Palestine war, what's happening. And they are not killing only Hamas members. Mm -hmm. They are killing any Palestinians because if I say and I am a Palestinian, Israeli consider it dangerous to them. You know why? because they never recognized there is a Palestine or there was a Palestine. They are in denial where they are living. Mm -hmm. the Hamas members, let's talk about it more seriously too. Where are they from? They coming from Mars, are foreigner to that land. Mm -hmm. And when they see their children getting killed and their mothers getting killed, their sister getting killed, do they have a right to resist? Do you? Do they have a right to resist? Here, the American, they are priding themselves of the history of the American and George Washington uh, liberating them from the British colony. What's the difference? What is the difference? Why the double standard? I'll go farther, uh, uh, closer to this moment. Uh, uh, why the people against uh, Russia attacking Ukraine? Or occupying, as they call it, mm -hmm. you know? And every American feels sympathy toward the people of Ukraine. What's the difference? Why the double standard? When people talking about peace and justice and all these slogans, why the Palestinians don't deserve that? Why you believe your media that if you say Arab or Palestinian, it's a terrorist? But Israeli is civilians, as if all the 1,400 Israeli, all of them civilians. Let me tell you something about Israel. If you are male at 18 years old, you have to serve three years on the army. If you are female, you have to serve two years. In the army? In the army. It's not country has an army. It's an army has a country. Huh. This is what Israel. Wow. Okay, what about, the, what about answering the question that is constantly asked and answered in our media, that is, that this attack on Israel by Hamas was both unprovoked and extreme? Uh, was it unprovoked, first would you, of all? Would you consider killing Palestinians in the West Bank or any place on occupied Palestine? or the assassination inside occupied Palestine and outside, provoc provocation or not? I'm asking the question for you, know, for yeah. you to an answer. Nobody talks about there are three Palestinians get killed in West Bank just the day before October 7. In October 6, three Palestinians. We're talking about Gaza today, but on the last 11 days in the West Bank, 62 Palestinians get okay. killed. Wow. 62 Palestinians, nobody talks about them. Okay, there is invasion of refugee camps in West Bank every single day. They are breaking the, 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 the doors and arresting people every single day. There were almost only 6,000 uh, prisoners, Palestinian prisoners, on the hand of Israel. All of them uh, 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 political prisoners or activists as resistance. Today, there are almost 10,000. 
in jail? Yeah, because they are arresting. They going village by village, city by city in, in Nablus, Bank. in Tulkarim, in Ramallah. Those are in the West Bank. So those are like hostages that Israel is holding. If you, I, I, I will agree on the uh, the, the word hostages, uh, but they are uh, on the hand. They are in Israeli. Prisons, and I know what's the reason because Israel uh, had uh, many Israeli prisoners on the hand of uh, uh, the uh, Palestinian resistance in Gaza, and uh, one day or another, there will be uh, negotiation to release those prisoners and to release all the Palestinian prisoners. So they want okay, for, to, to be have more. Uh, may, maybe. I think um, it's important to recognize that many Americans don't know what the West Bank is, what Gaza is. Could you just tell our audience, we both know, the, the difference between the two? Gaza is a huge strip of land that basically has been blockaded also by Israel. So all these people are trapped there, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean... Uh, and Gaza is separated from the other Palestinians who live on the West Bank. All, all Palestinian communities. Okay. Gaza is an open-air prison. Right. Mm -hmm. Completely locked by the Israeli. The Gazan tried many times to go in a peaceful uh, uh, marshes mm -hmm. to what they call the border of Gaza. Right. Ye months after months, year and after years, and hundreds of Palestinians got shot on the border by the Israeli, and they were they were civilian, unarmed civilian, and they are trying, frankly, to go back to open this prisons, and those uh, the uh, the settlements and the cities, the Israeli in southern Israel, as they call, like mm -hmm. those are the original cities and towns that belongs to the Palestinians after uh, before uh, 1948. Those refugees in Gaza, they look at the other side, it's home, mm -hmm. not foreigner. Mm -hmm. On another hand, you have a West Bank, uh, it's uh, not far away, but it's locked by itself, you know, mm -hmm. not on the way Gaza. There are apartheid walls have been built on many areas. The Palestinians cannot uh, travel uh, from one area to another. Uh, there are uh, around 425 uh, checkpoints. Uh, students cannot go to school. Farmers cannot go to the fields. It's up to the Israeli army personnel on the checkpoints to allow you or not. A, a sick person cannot go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, and they can uh, do closure to refugee camps or cities from one city to another. Other, you know, the same in Jerusalem, where the Palestinian community are suffering a different kind of mm -hmm, suffering. Mm -hmm. There is ethnic cleansing over there, taking over lands and houses, you know, on Sheikh Jarrah and Pita and other neighborhood of Jerusalem, to expand the Jewish existence, to make the city a Jewish city. So to get rid of the Palestinian, Muslim, and Christian from Jerusalem and to make it a complete, a pure Jewish city. And all that is apartheid. All that is racism and discrimination, you know? And to ask why the Palestinian resisting, it, the, the, the question is why it shouldn't be allowed. Anybody will live under these conditions or to live like me in a refugee camp most of their lives and my brothers in Lebanon, and they are dreaming of return back to that land, hmm. to be called terrorist because you're asking to go home, to go back? Hmm. Is that fair? So what, what does it look like that uh, the is going to happen in the West Bank and, mm. and or, or, or on the northern border where Hezbollah is on the other side. And who is Hezbollah? Uh, on the West Bank is an explosive, mm. very, since all the time has been, but now accelerating because there is many army intrusions 
to the uh, Palestinian big cities like Ramallah, Nablus, uh, Tulkarim, and others, many refugee camps. So the Israeli plan, no difference than the West Bank. Uh, t t in West Bank, no difference than the Gaza, mm -hmm. which is to push the Palestinian in, from Gaza toward Egypt and to empty the area, to do the same thing from West Bank toward Jordan and to empty the area, because the biggest danger f to what's so-called, or they did it by law, the Jewish state of Israel mm. is the demographic change, that the Palestinians, we are becoming majority between yeah, the River Jordan right. and the Mediterranean Sea. Mm. Hezbollah is Lebanese resistance uh, uh, movement, uh, beca became reality after 1982 Israeli invasion to Lebanon. And after that, uh, they uh, fought the Israeli in South Lebanon and they kicked them out completely in Lebanon in around 2000. And they succeeded uh, to stop Israeli invasion in 2006. They consider uh, Shaba Farm uh, is still a Lebanese uh, occupied land, and they're fighting for it. Okay, I guess we we're, don't have a whole lot of time left. One of the things I find very disturbing is that all we hear about is the American press. All we hear about is the reaction of Americans. I very rarely see what's going on in the rest of the world. And if you look at it, when I see anything about the rest of the world, it seems like there's a split between the white Western European powers. They seem to support Israel. But the rest of the world, Latin America, Africa, uh, many parts of Asia, appear to be supporting the Palestinians in this. It, yeah. Is that cr true? And why don't we hear that? Uh, you don't hear it on the Western press. That's what I'm talking about, You yeah. don't hear it in New York Times and right. USA Today and right. CNN and Fox News. But actually... You don't see it on CNN either. No. Uh, the reason why that's up, uh, there is no uh, coverage, because most of your coverage, most of you, the American politicians are pro-Israel. Our members of uh, our leader here in Vermont, they are in a full support of Israel, and they want to send weapons and aid, and which money. is it is disturbing and dangerous that you will be in the middle of genocide and you call yourself uh, progressive, and you will say okay to send uh, weapons over there. Why the world south? The people of colors, Africa, Latin America, and the rest are in support of the Palestinians because themselves they they experienced the same suffering the Palestinians right. suffered. So it was easy for them to make a decision uh, like the decision they mm -hmm. did because we feel toward their struggle and they feel toward our struggle. We are one on this struggle. Mm -hmm. Could I uh, bring up, since we're running short now of time, um, a uh, proposal f for the United Nations. This is by Jeffrey Sachs. Do you know him? I him, yeah. Mm -hmm. He has uh, put out a number of very interesting podcasts and thoughtful, uh, because he's had a long experience himself as a diplomat uh, uh, over time, saving Israel and Palestine through the United Nations. Um, if Israel continues to commit massive war crimes in Gaza in the face of global calls for restraint, restraint, Israel puts its fundamental national security at risk. I mean, I think that is, Israel has not really uh, absorbed what the ramifications of continuing mm. this genocide and, and Ex extending the war, if they're going to do that to, on the northern border, uh, and the impact that will have. Um, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has spoken clearly, persuasively, and eloquently about the need for a ceasefire, the release of hostages, the protection of the civilians of Gaza, support for Israel's security, 
and the decisive move to a Palestinian state in line with previous UN agreements. I mean, that's another thing I think most Americans don't realize, that when the issue of Palestine is discussed in the United Nations, it's almost, uh, it's 90 to 1. Uh, I mean, there's only a few countries, the United States. In fact, the United States just blocked something in the Another Security reason. Council, yeah. which was a proposal for a ceasefire. For ceasefire and send aid to the oh. people under bombardment. And can you believe it? So our rep representative there, I think her name is Linda Green, Green uh, uh, African American woman, had to vote against uh, a, a ceasefire. ceasefire. Yeah, because this is the American Council. policy. American policy is to stand with Israel. Both are colonialist country, and both they are uh, same in history. The Israeli and the American. Well, America used to be a revolutionary it, country at one point. Maybe at one point. Right, that's what I mean. But what we see now is supporting occupation and supporting apartheid and continue to block every resolution. There are tens of resolutions yeah. from 242 that uh, to, to, to withdrawal from a land occupied 1967 to uh, 191, uh, the division of the country, 194, the return of the refugees. None of any of these United Nations resolution have been respected by Israel. Or Never. The, or, 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 the, or the United States. Or the U.S. Or the U.S. Yeah. And the yeah. U.S. vetoed every, every resolution in support of the Palestinians. Well, this, uh, Jeffrey Sachs has the idea that um, actually the, the uh, P5, which are on the Security Council, which includes Russia, China, United States, France, and England, I guess, um, that there should be no geopolitical divide amongst the major powers with re regard to this crisis, that Russia has very strong ties with, with Israel, um, and the other countries have many uh, economic and historical ties, and they also they don't want to alienate the Arab and Muslim worlds. Many of them have a Arab um, uh, or Muslim population, so that he's arguing that the P5 should work together towards a UN Security Council resolution, and Russia is reportedly on the verge of submitting a peace resolution. I mean, do you think we could overcome our hatred of Russia right now. No, 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 no. The, the Russian uh, submitted one this uh, week and have been rejected. I don't it's know why you are rejected. optimist. Why you are optimist of another one? Uh, it's uh, unfortunate. I don't believe those countries were serious for 75 years to bring a resolution that they can act and they can put. Uh, uh, some kind of a, a change of the atmosphere over there from war toward peace mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. toward settlements. Mm -hmm. This is only talks. I mean, for us, the Palestinians, we are not optimistic that the solution right. will come uh, from the hallways of United Nations or from the European countries, because those European countries and America are the one who created the crisis over there. Without, without them, Israel wouldn't be existed. Mm -hmm. That yeah. problem wouldn't be existed. And for the American public, let's stop this kind of denial not to take responsibility what your country have uh, committed. The thing that, that, to me also, I would really like to speak to the American people on this subject, and many subjects. Is it in America's interest to continue these wars really everywhere? But let's specifically <coughs> focus on our support of Israel. As you pointed out, Wafiq, many, many times, these wars, particularly the war against Gaza, against the Palestinian people, would not be possible without U.S. taxpayer money. Of course. And that's what, uh, no, that's what gets me every single time. It's in my name that this stuff is happening. It's with my taxpayers' money that the people of Palestine are being decimated. 
It is. And, and that's what every American should ask themselves as we face this crisis. And what is <coughs> our government doing? Uh, 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 as American public, they should ask uh, this question to themselves. Yes. And they should yes. ask it to their representative who are voting again and again for sending They're our They're going to vote tomorrow, aren't they? They're going to try to create a Congress yeah. and leader of a Congress just for that vote only. Just for that vote only, mm -hmm. without uh, yeah, they're going to have a, all of a sudden a speaker of the house. Yeah, but I mean, they they going to pass that right. resolution of sending billions of dollars of arms to Israel without a major thoughtful discussion. But there is a uh, the uh, something happening today that uh, what's his name uh, uh, Josh Paul he's uh, from uh, mm. Biden administration mm -hmm. he resigned his position because he thought it is unjust to send arm now who is Be he uh, Josh Paul I know but well. he is uh, the uh, head of the relationship between United States and foreign country on, on arms and uh, policy. Uh -huh. And this is a new development. And we want voices from representative here in Vermont from Berlin to take a stand and not to send us answers, generic answers, when we right. ask her where you stand, and to stop telling us two-state solution and she support this and that, and not to go with the trips with APAC without visiting Palestinian community over there. We ask uh, Senator Sanders uh, that it is not enough to threaten Israel of stopping the AIDS it's more actually to vote against right, it. Right. Uh, for Senator Walsh, he told me personally that he went, visited over there, and he saw what's happening in El Khalil Hebrew, and he knows what's Gaza going on, and he thinks it's apartheid. The, 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 the major thing you have to understand, Israel Politics is not because they have a leader called Netanyahu. Some people taking that excuse. Us, the Palestinian, we lived that when Begin was the prime minister, when Shamir was the prime minister, when Sharon was prime minister, when Golda Meir was uh, prime minister. And when we had all of our presidents, too. And all right. the American right. presidents right. from both sides. Right. So for the American public, please educate yourself and take a strong stand with justice this time. I think we're out of time. And on that note, please, USA citizens, wake up to our own government, please. Mm -hmm. okay. And that Becca Ballant is right now possibly voting for or against a ceasefire proposal in the House. So call her. I called her earlier. Good. I, I wrote her a letter. All right. Well, thank you very much. And this is not the end of this subject, I would thank think. Uh, thank everybody for listening, and we'll be back soon. Thank you.